Welcome to my YouTube channel by Todd Hutchinson. Today, I am going to talk to you about Bliss Symbols Picture Book, AAC Speech Device, Communication Then and Now. This video is going to be how I talk to people then and now. I have been an AAC user since I was a little boy. You might ask yourself, what does AAC stand for? It means Augmentative and Alternative Communication. There are high-tech devices. Low-tech devices, like voice output switches, and no technology strategies, like pictures and objects. Unfortunately, I only had access to no tech when I was a young child. But man, I wish I had access to the high-tech devices because it might have changed my life more. But instead, I started out with a Bliss Symbols board, a picture symbol system, that evolved into a picture communication book. And then finally I got my first high-technology speech-generating device, SGD, in 1986. My Bliss Symbols communication port was all I knew. I used this communication port from 4 years old until 18 years old. And man, it wasn't easy for me. To communicate, first I used my finger, but my school didn't like that. They thought it would better for me to use a head pointer because it was hard for them to see what I was pointing to. I didn't like it because I got a headache from it, and I just didn't like it. So. They made me a hand splint to help them see what symbol I was pointing to. I called it my sixth finger. I didn't like it because it was more work for me. Before they gave me a hand splint, they would paint my fingernail, and I didn't like that. The teachers thought using the hand splint was easy for me. They never asked me what I thought about it. But I also didn't say anything because I thought they knew what they were doing. So, I used it while my fingers were hard to open up and but knew that I needed to change it. I'm not saying that they were wrong, but I knew they don't want to listen to my opinion because it was working. If I didn't use it, the teachers or therapists would ask me where my hand splint is. Ugh, I had to put it on. When I used the board, I would point to the symbol. My helping person would say the word and then I would continue. It was hard when I met new people. They didn't always know how to help or how to understand. I would start by showing my bliss symbol board. Pointed to pictures. But people didn't say words for me. They didn't understand that this was how I communicated. It was very frustrating for me. Because I was pointing to the same stuff. But a lot of different people were speaking for me or worse. Not knowing I was trying to say something. 
Despite my frustration, I kept working on communicating and hoped for the best. When I was using my hand splint with my Bliss Simples board, I had so much to say. There were never enough words. I needed more symbols to help me to talk. So, when I was at school, I was lucky to have some teachers who believed in my potential. My speech teacher noticed that I needed more symbols to help me to talk. So, she helped me create a full picture communication book. The book was okay, but it was also a pain to use because I had 50 plus pages of picture symbols that I needed to remember and find to express myself. My speech teacher and I added more pictures to my picture book every week, so this was now more like a dictionary. As I worked on my communication, I started going to a classroom with a lot of typewriters. I first started to the typewriter with my head pointer, then with the hand splint. The activity was okay, but seemed pointless since all I was doing was copying words off a piece of paper instead of writing my own thoughts. Then one day, I saw something that the teachers were using. I couldn't help it. I had to go over to it, even if I got in trouble because it was just too cool. Every day I went over to it when I was in the room with the typewriters. Pretty soon, my teacher introduced me to an Apple system computer. Over the next two months, I learned everything about that computer. Every time I was around computers, I watched others use it, and I learned to use it without reading the book or taking a class. When they added a keycard to the computer keyboard, I could type with just my hand splint on. I could only use the Apple computer for word processing or to play games. My teachers wanted to see how fast I was writing, but I was bored because I was just copying something from a book into the word processor. Suddenly, I found my favorite thing in the world spreadsheets, and numbers. Oh my god. This was the best thing the team did for me because I saw how numbers worked. Even my own teacher began coming to me for help on how to use the computer and the spreadsheet program. She was so amazed that I had picked up all of this information within such a short amount of time. My speech teacher heard about what I did with the computer. She thought of an idea that might help me more than the picture book. One day I went to speech therapy to work on my communication book. I didn't know but my speech teacher was about to change my life when she showed me my first high-tech AAC speech generating device. This device had voices in it, so that people could listen to me speak, instead of talking for me. My first speech device was a touch talker. 
by the Brantirome Company, PRC. The day that my speech teacher put this touch talker in front of me was amazing. I didn't know what it was. It looked like a big box with a lot of holes on top of the screen. This was my key card. The box also had a lot of different pictures on the screen. With my hand splint on, I began exploring how to use it. And after a few weeks, I thought it was a joke and that this device was not going to assist me. I was disappointed and frustrated. You see, unlike how we made my communication book, one picture on each page at a time, the touch talker was already programmed and was not similar to anything that I had used before. I had trouble remembering the new language program because all of the pictures looked totally different and had different meanings to me. At one time, there were 144 pictures equating to almost 10,000 words on this touch talker. To resolve the issue, I needed to have the pictures that had the meanings that I had learned over the years. Remember, I started using bliss symbols at the age of four. I am now 16. So, we cleared out the page sets from the device. We built a language system specifically for me using the bliss symbols and pictures from my communication book because I knew these meanings and already communicated effectively with them. Then we came up with pictures that I could associate with words and phrases so that I would remember them when paired with a meaningful picture. When we started, the first picture I picked was a picture of an apple. This picture to me meant food, eat, hungry, and the color red. For this one picture, it meant four different things. The challenge was that I had a picture with the several meanings. I told my speech teacher that I would like to program like my communication book. I learned on my bliss simple board that green colored icons equals verb. Blue equals adjective, and orange equals nouns. Now, when I selected apple plus orange key, food is the word that appears in the message window. If I select apple plus blue key, hungry appears in the message window, and if I select apple plus green, it appears in the message window, but we cannot forget about traditional word forms like eats, eating, ate, eaten and to eat. Now one picture must represent eight words. But, what do I do color red or the word apple? We continued to create word combinations with the symbols. As we added more pictures on the device, we added an end key because we did not want any key to mean itself. If I am using the apple picture, and I want to say the word apple, I push apple key plus end key equals apple. While programming, 
The first mistake we made was that we didn't put a space at the end of the word. So, in the message window the words were clustered together. If I wanted to say, I am hungry, the message would clutter together to be, I am hungry. Unfortunately, to fix this problem, we had to change each key. The process was a lot of work, and took months to complete, but it was my unique system, and I am the only person who understands it. Remember that everyone is different and thinks differently. When the programming was completed, my AAC device was ready to go. I could not believe I was actually going to be able to talk without help. I was in awe, and my speech teacher started to cry. I was excited, because now I was going to have a voice, and people can now listen and hear me, but it was still very hard for me. When I used my speech device, I had to remember what all the pictures meant to me. I needed to learn when it was the right time to use it. I thought of an idea to help me. I needed time to play with my touch talker because that's how I learned. To have more time, I needed to take my touch talker home. I had a long 50-70 minute bus ride each day. On the bus, I learned how to use my finger on an AAC device. Best thing I did but everyone didn't like it. Why? Oh and I learned sign language, made friends, and met nice girls. To have my speech device all the time was important. After a few months, our request was approved and when I was on the school bus, I used my speech device to communicate. My bus driver thought it was cool. About a week later, I started to turn down the volume so that I could just practice using it on the bus ride. This helped me because I had a lot of time to learn all about the touch talker and what it could and couldn't do. Like most technology, it can fail. A moment that I am proud of because I understood technology was how to handle tech bugs. A few times. I found bugs or issues in my speech device. One trick was to turn it off and wait a few minutes, then turn it back on, and it worked fine. Once, when I was home, I found a bug in my device. The next morning, I wanted to find the bug before I reached school. I found it, and remembered it, and then I turned it off my device. As I headed to the classroom, I turned my speech device back on. I asked my teacher if I could see my speech teacher. My teacher asked me why. Did you break it? What? I felt like she had no faith in me. Why would she doubt me? I finally showed my speech teacher and together we called the company.
When we were connected, the company acknowledged there was a bug in our system and said that we found it because we were using the device a lot. My speech teacher clarified, No, I did not find it. Taught it. Just because I have a speech generating device, doesn't mean that is my only voice. By 16, I used my voice for small words like hi, my communication book, communication board, my speech device, plus I had learned some sign language. It took me a few months to use my touch talker more than my communication board and my picture book. But one day, I was ready to use my speech device as much as possible. Using my touch talker, I said please put my bliss board and picture book in my backpack on my wheelchair. The teachers were happy, but I wondered if it was the right thing to do. Now, I was using Touch Talker more, but my home teacher wanted me to use it even more than I was. She wanted me to just use my speech device, even though I knew that I could say good morning to her. Why? I didn't want to say it to her, but I did say hi to her with my voice. Well, she doesn't like that because I didn't use my touch talker in front of her. She wanted me to use touch talker 100% of the time. I asked myself, why? Man, she was a negative person. I can say hi, yes, no, thank you. And I didn't know why it was using my voice not okay. Why should I stop and use my speech device when I do have a few words that I can say? I chose to keep using my voice for a few things, but when people don't understand something that I try to say, then I will use my touch talker. Some people liked it, but some people didn't like it. I don't care what they think. This is my voice. When I started to take my AAC device home, I didn't use it, because my family knew me. Why should I have to use it? If I had to say something my family wouldn't understand, then, of course I did use it. My AAC device is now part of my life because it is the fastest way to communicate. I don't want to change my life, but what if I instead of getting a speech device at 16, I started using one when I was like 8? I ask that question a lot. I love my AAC device, but I felt and still feel that people look at my AAC device, not me. That is why I keep using my voice to say thank you, yes, no, and I don't know, because it is not words that I need people to listen to. It has everything to do with seeing and communicating with me. People lack compassion and their negative attitudes towards me.
make me think about how people treat others with disabilities. Especially individuals who cannot respond verbally. Now that I had been using my speech device more, new opportunities to use technology were heading my way. The candy lady, the teacher who always gave me candy, was working on something more for me. She knew I liked the computer. Now, she wanted me to use the computer through my AAC device. We worked on it for months. There were a lot of cables and a T. Tam that would help my device talk to the computer. When it was all working the right way, it was awesome. Oh my god. It was awesome. I could write a word faster than spelling it out. I can remember it like yesterday. Because it made me different. Now I could use my speech device for writing. And I didn't have to spell every letter out. I hated typing every letter. Because it took me a long time. What used to take me 90 minutes now only took 30. Time to make more goals for myself. I knew that my speech device... And now computer technology would turn my life around. But we still had a lot of work ahead of us. Looking back, what if I didn't tell someone to put my bliss symbol board in my backpack? I knew if I hadn't, I would have used that board every day. 1988 was the last time that I used my board. While writing my PowerPoint for my Boston speech in 2018, I was looking for a picture of bliss symbols. I found a picture of my old communication board. Wow! I looked at it for five minutes. I remembered it, and I was very shocked. It had been 30 years since I last used it. Then, I looked around me because since then, I have been through many speech devices that kept advancing with the rate of technology. I started with the Touch Talker, then to the Liberator, the Pathfinder, and lastly my Echo 2. The Echo 2 was a huge upgrade that offered me a far more advanced communication device. This is my connection to the social world. Not only does it help me to speak to someone while I am out being social, but now I can connect to the internet from almost anywhere, text people from my computer, and I have access to use social media, like Facebook. I access my Apple computer through Bluetooth with my Echo 2. I use my huge flat screen TV to project from my computer, which gives me access to communicate via email, use the web, and communicate with anyone while at home. Each speech device that I have purchased or that I have had has helped me get everything that I need. Now, I can talk to people, use a computer, make schedules, and I create and manage my budget, 
and write my speeches for events. Thanks to technology, I have more access to do things that I want to do. A few years ago, I asked my mom for an Amazon Echo with Alexa for Christmas. She said to me, I can't talk. I said I can't, but my speech device can. So she bought it for me for Christmas. My Alexa has really opened up doors for me, but not literally yet. Maybe, one day. By using my speech device, I can tell Alexa to turn on the lights, play music, tell jokes, adjust my thermostat, and much more. I wished I had this technology and a speech device when I was 8 years old because it might have changed my life sooner. I would have used my speech device more. It is a tool for me to use. It has power to do different things. And I have faith in the computer world to keep making accessible technology that will continue to change my life. After all of my struggling for independence, I now have the freedom to do what I want. And that is something I have dreamed of my entire life. My experiences have driven me to work on something for me. I am writing a book. It is a story about my life. I am glad I have my Echo too, because now I can go to the mall and open the notebook and start writing. While I sit, People walk behind me and can see what I am doing. Sometimes, I laugh at them because they don't have any idea what I am doing. I've always wanted to write about my life. So, I chose to write a book. I didn't want the entire book to be based on just my point of view. Instead, I am writing multiple short stories based off of my real-life experiences, along with the experiences of my loved ones and friends. When I am done, I look forward to sharing my book with the world. Thank you. Laura E. Smith, editor.